The case of accused Russian hacker Roman Seleznev has brought a team of Russian diplomats to Guam. We caught them on camera Monday as they were leaving the Haganya detention facility. KUAM News has learned, however, Seleznev is no longer there. He was placed up here yesterday evening for medical observation. According to Russian media, Seleznev suffered brain damage from a 2011 terror bombing in Morocco. He has been in Guam for almost two weeks after U.S. authorities reportedly picked him up in the Maldives and brought him here. Since being detained on island, a Russian media report he's been housed in substandard conditions, such as a damp cell, forced to lay on concrete floors without a blanket, and was not provided any essential hygiene products. Today, DOC Director Jose San Augustine opens the doors to the room in the infirmary where Seleznev is now being housed temporarily. As you can see, he's, he's got a bunk. A, uh, a mattress, sheet, and a pillow. Uh, also, he's got a restroom and uh, hygiene uh, material, toothbrush, toothpaste, and a bar of soap. I think it's it's fine that we're looking at the conditions that he's staying in now, but what about the conditions uh, when he was in Iganya? Okay. And, and that's a good question. It's actually the same setting, uh, with the exception of, again, he was the only one in that one room. Uh, the only one complaint that uh, he had was that it was too cold. And my understanding is the temperature in that room was about 70, 73 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did accommodate him by giving him an additional sheet uh, as well. So again, um, we're meeting all the minimum requirement that's required of us, both local and federal law. Seleznev was moved to the Mingilao compound's medical unit because he's in need of medication for his brain injury. According to St. Augustine, Guam does not offer the type of medicine he's required to take and instead has been provided an alternative and will be monitored over the next few days. Dr. Saad is confident that that medication is going to work, but that's a reason for the observation. As for allegations of mistreatment, KUAM was able to talk with Seleznev, who speaks limited English. In my country, I have a doctor, hospital. When I come here, they treat me well, not like the So I eat pills, uh, and you, you, in your country, know the pills that I eat in Russia. So they give me another one, which is bad. Because I have serious problem with the brain and uh, epilepsy can start any, any time. That's all. Did you ask to see the doctor when you got to go or when you yeah. got to the hospital? Every day. Every day you asked yeah. to go to the doctor? Yeah. And what were you told? Uh, I want to see a doctor to because my medication almost finished and he must give me the same. But can doctor said came at maybe third day, third, and say, I, I find for you another medication and that's why I take it now. I don't know. I think it's not good. The medicine or the yeah. care? The medicine. Also, just don't understand why I need to be isolated in room and can go outside for walk. I don't know. So you are not allowed to no. go outside? No, I sit here or? in the room. All, all time. Seleznev's father is a Russian politician who has vowed to protect his son. Russia calls this a case of kidnapping. The U.S. State Department, however, denies those allegations. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki. This was a law enforcement action. It was based solely on law enforcement considerations. Uh, the indictment in this case was returned uh, more than three years ago, uh, and thus, um, uh, predates, I think it's important to note, any current issues or current disagreements between Russia and the United States. Um, he was arrested following his expulsion from another country, um, under, acting under its own laws, and he was 
advised of his rights and given consular notifications. Seleznev is scheduled to appear in the U.S. District Court of Guam next week. He was indicted three years ago in Washington State on multiple counts of bank fraud and aggravated identity theft. According to the indictment, he's charged with hacking into retail point-of-sale systems and installing malicious software on the systems to steal credit card numbers. The crimes were not only perpetrated in the United States, but worldwide. Some of the banks he's accused of defrauding include Chase Bank, Capital One and Citibank.